Thank you, Constable, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me start my remarks by saying something which I would get told off if I said in the States Assembly, and it is this, and let me be clear and unambiguous. The government of this island has been completely dishonest with the ordinary voters in this island, and it is pursuing a package of measures. It is pursuing a package of measures not only that they didn't say they would pursue if they were elected, but in some instances they actually said they would do the opposite. Now, on your chairs, or on some of your chairs, unfortunately I didn't print enough cof uh, copies off, I have left copies of an extract from the state sitting on the 6th of November 2014, which was just after the last general election, where Deputy Eddie Knoll stood as a candidate for TTS Minister and he was subjected to 20 minutes of questions from other states members and Deputy Southern asked him very clearly in black and white about privatisation and job losses to which he replied and I quote I do not intend to reduce that 500 workforce at all in fact it's going to increase black and white within days of making this statement Deputy Knoll and his department began drafting plans to privatise huge swathes of our essential public services and sack potentially hundreds of workers who provide an excellent service, keep Jersey clean and running, and many of whom have dedicated decades of hard work for this island. And on top of that, he's also planning on introducing a new waste disposal tax, something at the same state sitting he said he would do the opposite. A litany of broken promises all because of a council of ministers of which this particular minister has spent his entire political career being slavishly loyal to, has run this island in such a fantastically incompetent way that they have racked up a £145 million public spending deficit which they are intent on forcing ordinary working islanders, low and middle earners, to pay the price for. First, they came for the pensioners, abolishing their Christmas bonus that they've worked hard all of their lives to earn. Reform Jersey fought against this, but we were unsuccessful. Then they came for the disabled, cutting the support many of these people rely on to sustain some basic quality of life. And we fought against this too, but were unsuccessful. Now they're coming for the manual workers, and I give you my cast iron guarantee that we will do absolutely everything we can to stand, to stand alongside you and fight to protect not just your jobs, but the public services that every islander relies on. And I believe with your help, we will and we can succeed. <laughs> now, Deputy Southern has lodged a proposition to the States which will be debated next week. And the purpose of this parish assembly tonight is to ask you for a vote in favour of our motion to give us the mandate we need to challenge the government and to say to states members that they need to stop and think again. They must remember that their loyalty is to the people who elected them, not a chief minister who seems more and more out of touch and unaccountable as every day passes. It's the public they work for, not each other. Now, I've asked questions in the States about whether Deputy Knoll is prepared to get round a table and meet these workers face to face, talk through their differences and find where there is common ground or where there are areas that workers believe savings could be made without needing to resort to redundancies. And such contempt he has for all of you and the rest of his staff that he won't even meet the workers' representatives face to face to sort things out. What sort of leadership is that, I ask you? Now, every worker I've spoken to, and I'm pretty sure I've spoken to a darn sight more than Deputy Noel has, knows and accepts that times are tough, and they're prepared to do their bit to find savings and make sure that all of our services provide good value for money, but they're not prepared to be sacrificed on the altar because of a council of ministers which doesn't have the brains or the guts to tackle the real problems this island is facing. Now, there are three problems, three main problems as I see it. 
We have a tax system which is completely and utterly broken, where the wealthiest islanders do not pay their fair share and many companies aren't even asked to pay a single penny. Instead, those taxes are piled onto low and middle earners who can scarcely afford it as it is. The second problem is that the government has no real plan to get our economy back on track. They seem to think that the way you create jobs is by sacking people. They believe that zero hours contracts and minimum wage jobs are good enough and we don't need to strive for better. Well, the only jobs that they know how to create are the jobs for the boys. Which brings me on to the third problem this island is facing, which is that there is a serious senior civil service gravy train People who are ripping the public off, wasting taxpayers' money left, right and centre, resisting any change that might affect their own jobs. And most insulting of all, they are prepared to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on business class flights, on trips around the world which are of questionable value and which they lie to the public about the fact they were playing golf when they got off that plane. That's insulting and any Chief Minister who won't deal with that before he comes to ask you to pay the price is no leader and if he's not prepared to deal with that he should be prepared or at least we should be prepared to force him to resign over it because it's disgraceful. <laughs> The Council of Ministers must get to grip with these three problems before it goes ahead with a programme of privatisation which will only provide a short-term budget benefit rather than looking long-term about what we want for our public services and our society as a whole. Now, This programme of privatisation has been tried and tested across the UK, paradoxically usually in Conservative-run councils where they acknowledge it has proven to be a complete failure. Take Cumbria, for example. In 2001, when foot and mouth disease hit, the private firm that they had outsourced all of their infrastructure services to took them for a complete ride over it. They found all sorts of contractual excuses to charge them with bolt-on charges, costing them 20 million plus a year. And it took them over a decade before they could bring those services back in-house again. And when they did, then they started getting decent value for money and a decent service. And so I asked the public this question. When bad weather hits and our roads and sea defences are damaged, who do you want being asked to go out at four o'clock in the morning in the pouring rain to fix it so that you can get to work and take your kids to school safely the next morning? Somebody on minimum wage or a zero hours contract or a worker who's paid well, highly professional, committed to their job and respected by their employer? It's a no-brainer. We all know what the answer to that question is. And if we privatise these services, we will pay the price and it will take years to get back on track. So a vote in favour of this motion that we are putting to you in this parish assembly is a vote to tell the Council of Ministers to think again. It's a vote to tell states members to listen to their electorate and stop breaking promises they made at the last election. And it's a vote to safeguard all of the services which we rely on. We beat these people in the People's Park debate and with your support, we can and we will continue to beat them until the next election where we kick this lot out and have a decent government.